Hello, everybody. This is Dan Darnell from the Data IQ product team. For this session today, I'm talking with Mark Sucrese of Epsilon. Mark, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Dan. Appreciate it. Before we start talking about use cases and areas we've worked on with customers, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and about Epsilon? Yeah, sure. So, Mark Sucrese, I'm the VP of Marketing Sciences at Epsilon. I manage our uh, global implementation of machine learning and AI uh, to help produce personalized experiences for our clients. Been at Epsilon now for around seven years. Uh, Epsilon is a global leader in um, marketing, agency, data, technology, uh, and supports some of the largest brands across the globe. That's what's interesting to me about that is that you're a marketing agency. And when I think of marketing agencies, I think about people who are helping people with, you know, campaign structure or creative or things like that. But you're talking about helping people with data and analytics to do, I would imagine, smarter, better marketing, right? Sure. I mean, nowadays, it's the only way to really do um you know, create those relevant customer experiences and personalized journeys is, you know, and <clears throat> back in the day, agency work and creative work was the way to um, to create those relevant experiences. But now with the mass amounts of data that are out there, um, data has become a, a linchpin in, in creating those experiences. So yeah, Epsilon had to really spend a lot of time focused on that. Surprisingly, Epsilon's had a data business for decades now but it's now just become a relevant um, part of that overall ecosystem. And now we're seeing the explosion of ML and AI in that, uh, in that process as well. And that's where my team comes in is really delivering those experiences using ML and AI techniques. I think it's, it's obviously very um, timely and, and fascinating for me as, a, as someone who's involved in marketing as well um, to think about that. And I know certainly I've been involved in the technology side of marketing for years. So it, it totally makes sense to me, but I would imagine for a lot of marketers, in, um, thinking about AI and ML might be a little scary for them, in which case having someone like Epsilon come in and help them is, is, uh, exactly what they need. I mean, that's, uh, there, that is, uh, an understatement. Um, you know, I think, uh, <laughs> Uh, the big brands like Tesla and, and Apple and Amazon sort of scare some of the other brands in, in, in sort of the evolution of ML and AI. And, uh, but it's not, it's not hard. It's not complex. And um, Epsilon definitely acts as a great system integrator and technology provider to do that. And we work in partner with the brands like yourself um, to help, you know, um, ease, that, ease that tension that a lot of our clients uh, are fearful of when it comes to that. Great, I think that's a good segue too. Um, you know, thinking about a particular customer, you know, we don't have to mention them by name, but just thinking about a particular use case, is there somebody that comes to mind that you think is a good example to share? And in thinking about that example, you know, what was the challenge that they really faced um, that led to the project, you know, where you worked with them? Sure. Yeah, so we have a you know a large automotive retailer that my team works with, and they're faced with a um, a massive challenge, and that is, you know, if you really want to create one to one experiences where brands can connect with uh, their customers at, at a, at a, in a way that's relevant to them, um, and you think about digital experiences, but this brand also has you know thousands of storefronts across uh, the U.S. And, you know, so you might be on the website browsing and shopping for goods, and then you show up at the store and it's a completely broken and different experience. You know, they were challenged with how do we consolidate our data? How do we bring content together and then execute um, that in a way that's personalized? And that was the challenge that we were faced with was asking Epsilon help, you know, we need help solving this problem. We, you know, we talk about creating those one-to-one -one experiences, but the challenge that they were faced with was, a low number of resources that could handle the workload, thousands and thousands of products that are available to everybody every given day, uh, you know, content and messaging that uh, they're trying to cater towards at a one-to-one -to -one level. And that was a challenge for them. And so either you throw a lot of bodies at it and hope that, you know, a marketing team with thousands of people could solve the problem, or you look 
to technology to help uh, assist with that. And, you know, they asked us to help on the latter of those two. Um, and that partnership that we have with Data IQ is where we felt like, uh, you know, we could solve that problem and in, in creating those experiences they were looking for. Yeah, so that's really interesting. So they're kind of, they're looking at, the, they're an omni-channel retailer. They obviously started out as a uh, selling through bricks and mortar stores, and then they've moved online. But I would imagine that the amount of data they now have has massively increased as a result of moving online. And also creating a, a true one-to-one -one omni-channel experience is kind of daunting when your, your um, knowledge is about how to sell you know, auto parts. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and uh, you know, when we look at the way COVID has disrupt, disrupted their business, um, you know, you would think that the brick and mortar side of their business would have declined, and everyone would went online. But because they promote a lot of um, you know uh, self help programs, so that people can work and fix on their you know work on their automobiles, that we saw an actually increase in their retail shops because you know, people spent time during COVID to repair their vehicles and work on them. So uh, more people were in the stores and more people were online. And so um, their business actually saw a, a different turn of events than other retailers saw during uh, that COVID hit. But again, you know, it, you think of about it as like a moment in time. Um, and you, a brand only has seconds to make sure that the message and content and information that they're providing uh, a customer is relevant for just a small period of, of time. It's probably seconds to get it right. And if you don't get it right, you're generally moving on to uh, another brand to help them solve their problems. Great, I think everybody gets the, the challenge. Um, tell us a little bit about the solution. I mean, you obviously worked with them. What did they do? What did you do with them to try and you know help build that one-to-one -one experience? Sure. Yeah, I think what you know the, the critical piece was creating like a hub and spoke environment, a, you know, a technology solution that sits at the center of these various uh, experiences. Whether it's email, <clears throat> excuse me, website, mobile application, storefront, and create um, a hub and spoke environment that allows data and information to come in from those applications and those experiences, processed through models that have been created to predict relevant personalized products and messages and content and be able to then distribute those out to those uh, channels in a relevant way. So when the consumer hits the brand, whether you know they browse some product on the site, maybe they see a promotion, they drive to the store to go buy something, maybe they open their mobile app, you want that to be a connected experience. And you know to be able to do that, you have to be able to process information, train machine learning models, retrain them on, on the fly and then be able to serve that out uh, into or, you know that particular channel wherever the consumer is um, in a consistent and relevant way. And that's really how we had set that up was that sort of hub and spoke idea um, so that you know those various applications could call in and then receive you know the the information uh, as an output in both real time and batch processed. Cool. And so what uh, you know, you mentioned some some advanced analytics, data science, and models. What what was the role of Data IQ in that project, and where where Data IQ kind of fit in? Yeah, so you know, I call first off, there's I call the bookends. The bookends are you know for machine driven experiences. The bookends are data and content. So we you know we had to make sure we had data consolidation and, and profiles and identity mapped properly. And on the other bookend, you have to make sure that if you're gonna distribute real-time personalized experiences, content has to be readily available. You have to be able to serve up that, those you know, interesting pieces of copy and information and imagery and video. Uh, but in the center is, machine, is the machine learning. And so that's where Data Acoustics is in the middle of that experience where uh, you know, we created structured data schemas, to connect all the data sources, um, you know, build feature creation and feature engineering that focuses on ways to construct data as it comes into the models. And then we build a library of models in Data IQ to uh, solve various problems like product recommendation models, could be subject line testing models, content optimization. So there's a library of models that, been, that have been built for them. Uh, and then 
and then you know using things like uh, automation and API nodes from uh, Data IQ, being able to serve out those batch in real time process. And so Data IQ is really at the center of all of that, um, it's sort of like an intelligence center to make all those decisions. Great. I mean, I find that's, it, that's I find it kind of. Uh, yeah, I find it kind of fascinating that, you know, the traditional, that's one reason that we really love working with DataIQ is like, it's a traditional data science toolkit, but we've sort of turned it into a decision engine um, where uh, it's doing more than just generating insights and information. It's used as a real-time action engine that can, um, you know, produce those personalized experiences the way a marketer wants. Great. Yeah, I mean, I think the platform is, it has, it's so extensible and you can do so much with it. I think a lot of people see it in the facet that they happen to be using at the time, like they might use it for auto ML or they might use it for data prep. And sometimes they don't realize that it's it's really an end-to-end -end platform that allows you to you know, prepare the data, to build models, to create that model repository that you've done, and then to, to roll those out in production on either batch or real-time, which it sounds like you kind of used the end-to-end -end platform for this project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, um, we're trying to to foster um, in a, a world where we can collaborate better with our brands um, to build those data science toolkits. So we've coined this term BYOM or bring your own model, meaning we'll we'll can we Epsilon will continue to build mo models and libraries of models that can be used by our clients, but we want to create a collaborative workspace using. DSS to have those data science teams at those various brands work with us, build models, whether mm -hmm. they want to import notebooks or, you know, create that. And then whether the, we're building it as a, a test bed, a champion challenger environment, whatever, you know, you want to call it, but we can all collaborate together versus, you know, part of the scary part of the brand C is that like, this is a replacement for a data science team or a reporting team when in fact we're trying to teach them just the opposite. We want to foster that and encourage them to do actually more exploratory work, more um, testing that we can then put into that orchestrated environment. That's fantastic. I think, yeah, a lot of people think they're being replaced, but to be honest, there is so much work to do as we transform these businesses that it's not, we need all the people we can, all the smart people we can get and the best tools mm -hmm. and the best partners. That's the way that everybody's going to win, right? Yeah, for sure. So you did this project. We'll go back to the automotive example. Um, in that use case, you know, what were the, some of the results that they were able to see from this from this project that you did with them? Well, I mean, I think you know you've got the traditional KPIs that are measured in marketing. You know, like open rates and click rates, conversion. Uh, revenue improvements, and we saw really good lift, double-digit lift in, in all of those areas. Um, and to some extent, we really saw large increases, mostly because they really weren't doing a lot of analytical processing in this in this world. But so it was an unfair advantage. But to some extent, where we were competing against some level of intelligence, we were still winning in double digits. Um, but I think the real interesting part of all of it was just the 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 two areas that we that I think the brand really liked about the solution was one is the transparency of things like model interpretation and model understanding, model quality, just being able to like it's not a black box to them. And so they can they can get a better understanding of what's actually happening. And then the other piece is just around um, some of the advanced metrics we give them around uh, intent and like you know why things are happening the way they are. So we call it uh, intent metrics like, uh, you know, browsing and behavior information that's not that's not your traditional marketing insights, like why people click on things, what what type of content is resonating with them and why it resonates with them. And so although they're still getting their traditional KPIs, which obviously um, C-level employees like to see, there's still um, a level at, at the marketing analyst that gives them some really rich insights that they weren't getting before. So I think um, you know, from top to bottom, we're seeing uh, improvements uh, in information that have really impacted that business. It's so great, much so a great story. Now, so much so that they're now expanding. Like they're they, they're now growing to create personalization and, and new ways that they weren't thinking before. Like 
you know, at the storefront. So at the time of purchase in a point of sale terminal or uh, conversational AI and chatbot services, uh, push notifications. Like they're really thinking outside the box now that they know that they have this um, so-called Ferrari parked in the garage. They're trying to find lots of new ways to use it. So um, it's been a lot of fun. That's That was going to be my next question is what's next like with these guys? It sounds like you have a ton of stuff that you can work on with them and that they're excited now that they've tasted, you know, the, the, the goodness that comes with integrating the stuff into their marketing, they, they're planning to do a ton more. Definitely, definitely planning to do a lot more, um, looking at lot, lots more opportunities. I think the way that they now re think about their business, it's gone through a paradigm shift in that they're really looking at uh, these processes to take over the mundane work that marketing has and really set marketers free. You know, we're using things like TensorFlow and deep learning and cognitive science inside of Data IQ to actually create like things like intelligent taggings where people can learn more about content and why content resonates with people. And, and so what does that do? It just puts a challenge back onto the business to build more content, build more engaging content and do more exploration as to why people engage with the brand, not just, hey, they bought product XYZ, but this is why they bought it. This is the meaning for them. This is where they are in a purchase funnel and, and their journey. Those are kind of where that, that brand is going now um, as part of their next step. They're obviously looking for other ways to engage, but I think they're rethinking about how they go to market, um, you know, looking for, uh, ways to uh, break sort of the tradition uh, in, in kind of old school, you know, brick and mortar marketing to um, create like new learning sessions. And um, uh, I think just the way that they're re re think thinking their business has been driven a lot by what their, their findings are from their ML AI practice. That's, it's fantastic to hear that they're transforming. It, you hear about, bricks and mortar retailers suffering and and it sounds like they're starting to flourish because they've decided to to go through this digital transformation you know with you um that's great was was there anything in that process that really surprised them or surprised you about data iq i'm just curious as a product person you know love always love to hear those uh, stories yeah i don't i don't know um i think they I don't know about surprise in a, in a way that uh, was bad. I think surprise in a way that um, there's so much to learn about a product like Data IQ. They didn't really know a lot of the feature functionality existed. And Data IQ has been doing a really great job of releasing new product functionality. So things like auto documentation, for instance, right? You know, they get challenged by their legal and privacy teams all the time to, you know, be able to show from an end to end experience how programs are designed and built so that their legal compliance team might have it. Well, just the, the fact that with one click, you can create auto documentation out of data IQ is something that they can then hand deliver right to a privacy team. I think that stuff like that is really surprising them. Cause again, you're coming to a marketing team that sees tools like this as just insights engines and not an end to end toolkit that can deliver a full on, you know, uh, decision experience. That's, I think we're always finding little nuggets in there. I think the, on the flip side of that coin, what they've also discovered is in that paradigm shift that, um, hey, maybe we don't always have the right people hired today. Like this paradigm shift is now exposing gaps in the business that, oh, maybe we don't have the right people or oh, the processes that we have today are too cumbersome and don't allow us to grow with solutions like this fast enough. Where they wanna go fast, but mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's a legal, a legal process or a, um, it could be a logistics process that they have that's preventing them from growing at the speed they want. So they're challenged with breaking those down and, and trying to fix them so that um, they have an overall better experience. Yeah, it totally makes sense. I think that lots of businesses have faced that challenge of finding the right people. Um, I think one, one thing we've tried to do is just make it easier in our mission to democratize that you know more different people can use tools like this to do these projects. So hopefully that's helping them to find people who can get in and, and add value quickly to their organization. Yeah, I, you know, I think um, the, the funny thing that we've found is it's good and bad. And like the good is we've found a way to use data IQ uh, in a way that maybe others haven't. And, and that is 
turning data science into decision management where we're taking end to end mm -hmm. and um, like you stated, you know, to create a digital transformation, transformative uh, solution to focus on customer experience. But when you hire people, you know, you want someone that understands data science, but also understands like data engineering and, uh, you know, reporting and KPI translation and someone that understands the business that connect as a business to me. And that's challenging to find someone that understands business problems and can translate those into a data science world. You know, and I did some research with Gartner some time back and they said, well, you're trying to find a unicorn when you do this. So, um, you know, I think that's, but that's the evolution that we're seeing brands go through is they, they're, they too are now trying to find the right resources that don't just write code and program and understand data science. They, they're, they're trying to find people that can do that, but also understand you know, the real problems that a business is faced with um, while they're building those pro those projects out. It's definitely a, a serious challenge. I, I suspect they're glad they have you there to help them along the way. Um, so, uh, I mean, yeah, I think, uh, um, yeah, I mean, that's, ideally that's what we're there for, but, uh, you know, we've had brands that have asked us to help you know, write job descriptions and help them staff and hire over time. So we're, you know, we're happy to do that too. Awesome. Well, Mark, this has been a fantastic conversation. I really appreciate you taking time to join us for product days. Great. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Love working with you guys and look forward to the next one. Awesome. Well, I, I hope that the audience watching this session has enjoyed this as much as I have as a product person and a marketer. This is just fascinating for me. I want to thank you for joining us today uh, for this session with Mark Sucrese of Epsilon at Data IQ Product Days.